How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Monsters. This is Season 2, Episode 1. Uh, this one's entitled The Face. It originally came out October 1st, 1989. And yeah, I get that's a smart idea. Halloween's the creepy season. You have a cool horror anthology. Why not start it up in October? Anyway, this is directed by Alan Coulter and stars Imogene Coca, Gregory Groove, and Gary Roberts. And, you know, this is the beginning of season two. Whenever you do a season premiere, you want to put your best foot forward to draw in new people and get them hopefully interested to watch the rest of the season. However, with Monsters, I think instead of putting their best foot forward, they put their most bizarre foot forward, and I have to say, I, I really like this episode. I'm not going to lie and say it's the best episode ever, but it is a really fun little wacky idea. In this, two thieves break into a lady's house, she bites one on the hand, and her face starts growing out of his hand. That is so weird. And okay, it's not the best puppet ever, but it's pretty good for 80s TV. I mean, you only really see the hand in like one close-up shot whenever it's talking, but it looks kind of like a, a full moon puppet. And as someone who's a big fan of, you know, Puppet Master and Ginger Dead Man and, you know, all that stuff, it, it was cool to see something that looked like a full moon puppet. And also the idea of it being kind of this metaphor for guilt. Not really remorse, but more like paranoia. Like, we went in, we killed an old lady, and it looks like we got away with it. But there's something in the back of my mind just nagging at me. There's a literal face on my hand giving me a guilt trip. That's a cool metaphor. Now, I will say it didn't go as big and as crazy and as over the top as it could have. I really would have liked it if we could have got to Evil Dead 2 levels of insanity, but it doesn't really go that far. And also, there's not a ton of plot in this one. Like, I would like if they had a better plan or idea or something to get rid of the hand. They don't, but then again, maybe too much structure might have ruined this, because you only need a half hour time block that's not really that long, and we have a bizarre concept with this wacky hand face. Maybe that's enough, and we don't need to overcomplicate things. Let's just try to feel the emotion more than really think too much about it. And it really does get that in this looping cycle where it goes day and night, and the days he's fighting with his brother, and the nights he's dealing with the hand, and you kind of get that feeling, that descent there. So, it's not the best episode or anything, but with that wacky concept of a hand face, that's going to be one that people remember, and I think it was definitely fun. So, overall, this is a cool one, and it's uh, quite the way to open up the season. Quite the wacky visual presence, and you know what? Hey, I like it, so it's cool. I guess, without further ado, let's do a bit more analysis. I'm going to start talking a bit about the plot. I'll be avoiding major spoilers, and I'll try not to go too far towards the end, but I do want to take my time, say my piece on a few plot points, and do a bit of analysis, but no major spoilers. Let's go ahead and dive on in. We open up with the two thieves going into this lady's house. The idea is that she's a rich lady, but she doesn't really trust the banks, so all her money must be hidden in the house somewhere. There's a few bits where they're stumbling around in the dark and they're like, oh, be quiet. And I guess there's some good humor in here, but it's just a little too dark and because they are whispering, it's a little hard to hear. So some of the beginning does get a little lost. But when they find the old lady, they have to wake her up to ask her where the money is. And that's where things start to really get wild. She pulls a gun on them. They have to fight her down. And he puts his hand over her mouth in a be quiet gesture. And granted that she has to bite the hand, it's a really natural way to get the face where we want it to. Anyway, she gets off a shot. And I really do like that they took their shoes off earlier and this guy's holding his shoe and the bullet goes right through the hole. Good wacky energy. But he pushes her down. She hits her head on the headboard. Oh no, we just killed someone. Let's get out of here. 
and it does cut to them being back at the house and I kind of wish they stayed and looked for the money because it means the scene is over a little abruptly but I get if they leave the house then we can talk about spending those lonely nights you know all guilty and stuff so I guess the themes work out better but the energy and momentum of the plot I think would have been better if they stayed in the house and this transformation is happening quicker and they're looking for the money and it's all creepy and dark I kind of would have rather gone that route but whatever they go home and his hands bleeding a lot and he goes to wash it in the sink and starts to see the beginning of the face form out of it and yeah the face does get more defined over the course of the episode and the face will talk to him in the nights and it will say things like I really do like because he thinks it's a witch's curse and the hand says no I'm being kept alive on pure hate I was so mad at you I can't die that's a cool idea and I also like she says it's kind of like a disease you know it's in him and he tries to cut off his hand and she says I'm in you my face is here but I'm in you you cut off the hand my face will be on the stump that's a cool idea almost like the hate so much it's just in all of your blood that's creepy and then of course he can't leave because if he does the hand will scream so now he's stuck in the house dealing with this insanity and he's trying to get his brother to help him and that's where we get the day and the night shift going between days uh, with the brother begging and pleading, not getting any outside contact, and then nights with the hand scolding you. And you really do see this is not good for your mental state. But the brother, like the older brother, was the, the boss. He was the more structured one. He's what the younger brother looked up to and uh, he planned everything so without your structure there you can see that he's starting to question a lot too and their relationship is starting to deteriorate when the older brother starts to go more and more off the deep end and say you gotta find someone who can rid me of a curse now they don't get very far like I said I do wish this episode had a little bit more plot because they don't really you know you think Maybe they're going to find someone who can deal with the curse, or maybe they're going to find out what it is, or some way to work around it. Y you don't get any of that. It is, again, just about the emotion, and I guess I can appreciate focusing on fewer plot elements in order to get the ones that you have better, but I do wish there was a little something. But I will say, it does lead to some fun moments, and it's such a crazy concept with the hand. However, again, there, there's one thing in this episode where the younger brother jokes, hey, you got bitten by an old lady, what are you saying, you're going to turn into an old lady? That would have been a cool idea. I would have really loved if the hand spread into the arm and it turned into like a little body and you could see it was like absorbing and changing, but I'm talking about a Junji Ito concept on a monster's level budget. Maybe if we got to do a remake, that would be cool, but... For what it was, it was a fun little episode. Not the biggest and best thing ever, but certainly more on the bizarre side. And not gonna lie, I do love that, so I can definitely recommend it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Monsters playlist. If you guys want to see me talk about a lot of the past episodes of the show, you should be able to find them there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.